Thanks for checking out this movie review video. This is for the 2020 release Underwater, so this is a very new one for that reason. This is a no spoilers review, so you can kind of get my opinions on it and decide do you want to watch it or do you not want to watch it. But if you've already watched it, you can get some information from this. I kind of talk in a way that it's not spoilers, but if you've already seen it, you'll understand some of the stuff I'm kind of codedly talking about in a sense. So anyway, this is a 2020 film. Uh, everyone knows it stars Kristen Stewart in it. Now, I know Kristen Stewart's a very um, polarizing actress. There are people who are totally good with her. There are people who just hate everything she does. I have some problems um, with her, and I'll talk about it a little bit as I get into the review more. So this was directed by William Eubank, who directed the films Love and The Signal. Now, not The Signal, like the quasi-zombie film The Signal, which... I really like, I think that's a good one, and eventually we'll do a review on that one, but um, another movie called The Signal, which I have not seen, so. Uh, it was written by Brian Duffield, who di who wrote the films uh, Insurgent, Jane Got a Gun, and The Babysitter, and also Adam Kozad, who wrote Jack Ryan Shadow Recruit and The Legend of Tarzan. Uh, the film had a somewhere between 50 and 80 million dollar budget and it only made 40.9 million dollars in the box office so it lost money and after seeing this film i understand why it's i mean i don't recommend this film i i just don't because this is one of those movies where yeah there are some good things about it but there's not enough good stuff in it to justify spending your time watching this film when there are a lot of films kind of like it that are much better, much more fun, much more interesting. This film kind of seems like, hey, we made a film. Congratulations, you made a film. <laughs> but what is it, what it, does that matter? Like, how does that matter? Can't figure it out in this film. How does that matter? It doesn't. That's the point. So the creature design for this actually, uh, it's said that it was it was inspired by H.P. Lovecraft, which is why it's actually kind of funny that I randomly grabbed this shirt to wear today and then realized as I was about to do this review, oh, this is an H.P. Lovecraft-inspired shirt, Miskatonic University Historical Society. And there's, you can see, like a little Cthulhu lording over the town. Um, so it's just very random. Uh, it seems like there have been a lot more films recently showing up that are H.P. Lovecraft inspired. Now, if you're familiar with this stuff, you will see where that inspiration works its way into this film. Um, I mean, this isn't really spoiler, but it, it, there are creatures in the film. You know, it's deep, it's deep sea, there are creatures in the film, and those are inspired by H.P. Lovecraft. You can definitely see how that is. And the creatures, the design, they look pretty good, to be honest. But I would argue that you don't see them enough. You don't see them clearly enough. And especially for having tens of millions of dollars for your budget, we got to see that stuff. We really have to see it a lot more. But they showed it. They showed them a decent amount. We just need more lighting. And that's just another kind of issue in general with this film is it's very, very dark. You can't see a whole lot. It's disorienting, which... Like, I kind of understand because in the situation, if you as an audience member were in that situation, it would be disorienting. So you're kind of seeing it from the perspective of the characters. But for the standpoint of making it a film, it's tough to do it that way because it's hard to follow. You know, when it's dark and you can't see a whole lot, plus there's a lot of quick camera motions and quick cuts. Uh, you're disoriented. You can't, like, fix your eyes on anything. Like, you just don't know what's going on a lot of the time. And it's like, could someone provide me with some more light here? Like, you can set up a situation within the film that creates more light so that we can really see what's going on. And I really think they should have done that with this film. This is one of the biggest issues with it. Um, there, there's a This is set up immediately to be very much like Alien and Aliens. Now, it, it seems more inspired by Aliens than it does the original Alien, but there is that original Alien aspect in there, especially because you don't get to Aliens without having Aliens. So, if you watch this film, you'll see what I mean, especially the way they set it up. It seems um, the the kind of uh, long hallway shots and the way the the like underwater station looks reminds you a bit of the, the stations from Alien and Aliens. Uh, also, the the really um, kind of clear tie-in where it's in Alien and Aliens, these were 
uh, like mineral resource mining companies that were going out into space, and then they happened to run afoul of some creatures. In this film, it's the same thing. It's drilling for resources at, in the deep sea. So space, deep sea, it's very, very similar. So uh, for that reason, very inspired by Alien and Aliens, and you see it throughout pretty much. Things start in a very mundane way, but they actually don't take long to get crazy. I did like the fact that it's very slow for the first just few minutes, to be honest, and then boom, things are happening. And I felt like, oh, okay, this is cool. But then I realized, no, this isn't cool because we don't know who these characters are. And that's the thing. Like, you have no nothing established about the characters. You don't know who any of these people are. You're just thrown into the situation with all these people. And then you have to try and figure out, why do I care about these people? Who are they? What's their backstory? And that really never happens. So you just have really flat characters. They do try to make a little bit of um, development happen and give it a little bit of extra dimension to the characters much later in the film. But it really becomes a, it's too late now type situation. It's like, I've come so far not caring about any of these characters. Why are you going to try and make me care now? And you're not even doing that good of a job at trying to make me care, to be honest. You have to establish the characters early on. Otherwise, people don't feel invested. There is no establishment of the characters at all. They're not introduced, really. It's just like, here's some people. They're going off the assumption that because you're a human being and they're human beings, that you'll care. That's not how film works. You can't be that lazy with the script. You can't just do that. You have to make people get invested. You have to pull people into the film. And this doesn't do that, at least with the characters. Now, some people may really like it because it's, you know, it's kind of adventurous. You know, there are crazy things happening in this underwater, like this deep sea space station. And that might drive people's interest. There are people who really like that stuff. And I do think some of the cool camera stuff is that it, um, it does feel adventurous. Because you don't know where they're going within this deep sea space space station type thing um so it's exploratory in that sense so if you like that aspect of things you could enjoy this it's just there's not there's not really story here like there's not really a story there aren't really characters all the characters i was just like please just kill them all because i don't care i'm not invested at all just don't care so they messed up the script was just you know there was a concept here and then it just wasn't fleshed out, basically, is what it is. Or at least not thoughtfully fleshed out. They're just like, hey, we got this uh, rough idea for a film. Let's just make it. And I don't, I don't need to worry about the story all that much. Let's just, let's just make it. Let's go. So there's a pretty tough pressured decision that's made very early on in this, which helps to set the tone for how urgent things actually are. They did do a good job with that. Like, as soon as things get crazy, there's this tough pressured decision that's made, um which I thought they would build off that, and they just dropped it. So it, it, it was a great opportunity. It was a great scene, and then they just kind of dropped it. They, they, they could have made that kind of stick with characters and develop things that way, but they just they didn't. They missed a good opportunity there. The dire situation happens suddenly, and it has no explanation, which is actually a good idea because it's more from the character's perspective. They would need to kind of figure out what happens, and for that reason, you as an audience member are kind of like a character in a sense that you're experiencing everything along with them. But because of that, you should also give us the backstory on all these characters first. So if you're going to treat the audience like they're a part of this and crazy stuff happens and nobody knows why and we're trying to figure it out, then also treat us like the characters and let us know who you're in this movie with. You know, like, you have to flesh out these characters. You can't just pick and choose these things. You have to engage whole in a whole way the audience. So choose it. Are, are they, Is the audience going to be from the outside the whole time, the outside looking in? Or is the audience going to be from the inside experiencing everything? And you have to build the world in a cohesive manner that way. So make that decision and make the script cohesive for that perspective. They did not do that. It was kind of like, eh, I feel like doing it from out here, but then in from here, eh, what do we do? It's just the script. <laughs> not good. Like Alien, there is an adventurous nature to the film because of the movement through the underwater station. Like I was saying, I feel like that's done really well in Alien, and especially in Aliens, um, especially because that's a 
station they weren't familiar with, but these people are familiar with it, but you as an audience member are seeing it for the first time. So I did like that aspect of it, getting to see the scenery, the set design, and all that stuff. But, like I said, it's very dark, and it's kind of disorienting shots and quick cameras, camera movements. Um, so it it cuts down on that. Like, I would have liked to be able to see things better. Because, um, like, in Alien and Aliens, like, the set designs were amazing. Like, it looked great. So even when there wasn't a whole lot going on with the characters, you have so much to look at that just looks so cool. With this, if it was there, you you don't get to spend that time looking. And it felt like, once again, another missed opportunity there. They established Kristen Stewart's character as the leader pretty much immediately, which, you know, kind of further uh, increased that uh, that feeling of this is like Alien and Aliens. It was uh, seemed like a indirect reference to Ellen Ripley, basically. Uh, it has a very claustrophobic feel to it at times, which kind of made me think a little bit about the movie The Descent, but The Descent is a much, 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 much better movie than this, so if you want that, just watch The Descent. But for the little claustrophobic moments, they actually pulled it off well cin cinematically. So It appears T.J. Miller is in this film for some comedy, but that feels really forced. It does not work. And he doesn't really do a great job either. Um, comedy has a place in every film potentially, but you have to build it that way. Uh, with his character, the way they wrote him, the way they inserted him into the story, it felt so forced. Uh, Miller didn't do the greatest job delivering his lines, to be honest. Uh, and you were really just like, what? Why? Like, why are we doing this right now? Let's focus on what's actually going on, not try to distract us with, oh, maybe we can make you laugh just a little bit. This isn't a situation to laugh. Like, I understand that there are people who actually will just, like, make jokes in dire situations because that's how they deal with things. I understand that. But within the context of this film, it doesn't work. It doesn't work at all. And even, like, the jokes that they try to make, it's not funny. So, like, if you're going to inject comedy into it, it needs to feel right. It needs to actually be funny. And it's not. It's just, it just feels super lame. And you're just like, oh, okay. Thank you. Creature design's good, like I was talking about. You know, Lovecraft-inspired. Uh, but just didn't get enough of it. Bunch of the time, you can't tell what's going on because it's so dark and moving fast. It's super disorienting. I already talked about that. Uh, th there are a lot of long corridor shots in it which I feel like is something that was done in Alien and Aliens as well. So that's just another tie-in that makes you think about Alien and Aliens. Uh, they try to put some emotional stuff in this film toward the end of it, but honestly, at that point, it just feels like it's way too late. Uh, you need to establish that the audience cares about someone much earlier on in the film, and then you can hook them in emotionally with what you're trying to do at the end, and they just they didn't do it. Like I wrote down, like they never laid the tracks to get to that emotional stuff they're putting in there to actually pay off. So they're just throwing it in being like, wait, do you care? No, no, we don't because we didn't care before. So, you know, when you just give us random people who we have no idea who they are or what their motivations are or what they care about in life or, you know, even if they have families, like you can't just give us, here's nameless random person, which that's the thing, like, it doesn't even matter what the names of the characters were in this. They're so throwaway. Like, they're all throwaway. And that's part of the reason why you start feeling like, just kill them all. Just like, but then that's that's another problem, is that it's a PG-13 film. So the deaths aren't even good. They're terrible. Because you can't even see gore and blood, and there's no, like, you can't even see how they could have pulled off good effects for gore and blood because they can't do it because it's PG-13. Now, would an R rating on this film have saved the film? No, it wouldn't save the film because, like I said, the story's not really there. But, and the characters aren't there. But it would have helped. It would have created a, an A level of interest in this, in my opinion. So, I don't know. It, you have to have a really strong script and a really good story idea and really good characters in order to do PG-13 for horror, in my opinion. Otherwise, you have to realize that what you have is kind of weak, 
and you got to put good kills in there and good gore just to redeem it let's be honest there's actually a good quote at the very end of this film there's a voiceover uh kristen stewart's character with a a quote and it's a really good quote and you'll know what i mean if you watch it um pretty cool it, it's kind of about like feelings and how feelings get tied into things and about taking action and it's it's a good quote i did enjoy that that was this, this one dialogue moment of inspiration it play so this film actually plays a bit off the idea of the deep ocean being a relative unknown to humanity because i mean it is and this kind of idea of like we don't really know what's down there so if we venture down there are we prepared for what we might find what we might have to deal with now it's not just from that perspective it's also from the perspective of when a company sends people down there are they ready now this is something obviously that's been seen with alien and aliens before so it's it's well trodden material yeah uh one of the big issues is you oh yeah i already talked about that not feeling connected to the characters uh Kristen Stewart is actually her usual self in this, in my opinion. She never emotes with her face, and she always delivers lines with no emotion. That's her acting. That's how she is. Now, for that reason, I can't judge, is, is she better in this role than other roles? Or is, you know, I can't judge that type of thing. I just don't like the way Kristen Stewart acts. Now, she's not the only one. There are other actors out there who I can't stand because they have the same type of acting. Richard Gere, Olivia Munn. Kristen Stewart are all the same to me. They barely ever emote with their faces. And when they deliver lines, it's always flat. Like there's, there's never emotion shown in their delivery of lines. And for that reason, I can't connect with the characters. I can't care about the characters. It seems lazy, but that's just, you know, how it is. I will say though, Kristen Stewart's physical acting in this film was good. Like she physically... It, which it seemed like a relatively physically demanding role. She rose to that, and she did it. So, you know, I will I will give her credit for that portion of it. Uh, because of the flat characters, frantic camera movement, darkness, and the fact that it's PG-13, so there are no good kills, this movie is boring. It's a boring movie. That's all I can say. Like, even when stuff is going on, it's boring. So, I you know, if, you, if you're looking for a film that feels kind of like this, just watch Alien or Aliens. If you're looking for a film that's underwater because you like that aspect of it, which I do, I, I dig that type of thing. Instead, I would watch something like The Meg because at least, is The Meg a good film? No, but is it fun? Yeah, it's a lot of fun. So, this film, it's not good and it's not fun. So, watch The Meg instead because it's fun. Um, I'm sure there are some other ones that I'm just not remembering at the moment for underwater films, but yeah, Jaws, although it's not really underwater, it's about the water, but yeah. But anyway, that's my review of this. I don't like it. It's not good. I, I mean, the shots, like cinematography looked good, except for all the, you know, quick camera movement and everything. Directing seemed okay, I guess. Uh, so out of five stars with half stars in play. One and a half, it's a one and a half star film. Uh, I'm sure there will be people out there who like it, and thank goodness, because people should like every film. There should be people who like every film that's ever made. So I do. I would particularly like to hear from people in the comments who have seen this and actually either were like, yeah, it was good, or loved it, because I like getting different perspectives. And maybe there's some stuff I didn't think about that I was um, you know, being a little harsh about or just didn't occur to me. And, you know, there's a possibility that if you bring it up, I can be like, oh, yeah, I think you may have been right on that. So I'm not, you know, these are just my opinions after I watch the films. I'm not 100% married to them. So anyway, thanks for checking that out. Do me a quick favor. Hit that subscribe. If you like anything I do, that's your way to repay me. Very painless and quick. And it takes you a second. So do that for me. If you're already subscribed, just hit the thumbs up. Just to let me know you're still watching and you want to encourage me to keep going. And then, like I said, comments. If you want to talk about this movie or anything else, you can just put it down there. It's fine. But thanks for taking your time to check this out. And until next time, keep it brutal.